When you bake a light map, this light map information only saves into the scene. This scene is called room 01. When I bake light maps in this scene, it creates a folder called room 01 underscore scene, the same name as your scene. And that's where the light map information gets dropped. Now, this is nice if you just purely work in this scene, but I want to show you what you can't do. A lot of us are used to when we create any asset with a specific purpose of using it in game, we're used to be able to use the prefab in the game. So in this case, if I want to use this prefab instantiate in a game where I just zoom back and there's an apartment complex with multiple floors, it's not as simple as dropping this prefab in because I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to come into my example folder original prefab, okay. I'm gonna come here and just create a new scene. It's just gonna be a basic URP. I'm not gonna save that. If I drop it in, none of that information that we were seeing in the other scene carries over. And this could be very frustrating. So basically my main goal here is to move the light map out of our scene and put it in a traditional material. This is easier to manage is more familiar. And one of the added benefits is you're not going to force everybody to work in the same scene. Like let's take this for example. Imagine there wasn't just one apartment, but if we had many floors, let's just say there's like 20 of these floors and you have a developer who's working in the scene and you have a bunch of artists that you want to assign a room to. If all of this lives inside one scene, that means you're going to have a lot of merge conflicts. And this is common in development when multiple people are working on the same file, you're just going to run into a lot of issues. So in this case, moving the light map out of the scene and into the prefab means that multiple artists can work on the same project. The first thing I have to do is we're going to create our own custom UV channel. And one thing to keep in mind in Unity, UV1 is your main texture and the light map is on UV2. And the way you can tell what where this is, is go on into any FBX file. Go to, I'm just going to go to floor 03M and click on not the parent of the FBX file, but the actual mesh. Right now we're on shaded, but if you go into UV layout, you'll see that this is the UV0. I'm just going to call it UV1, whatever. The first UV is your texture. The second UV, in this case, they're calling it channel one. This is the light map. So that's how you can tell if your model, your FBX file, has multiple UVs. We're gonna create our own UV1 channel. This way, we can create a system where the light map is assigned to our material. First, I need to export this whole thing as an FBX file. And the way I'm gonna do that is go to Window, Package Manager. So click on Unity to Registry and type in Export in the search box. And then where you see FBX Exporter, click on that, install it. I'm just going to create a export folder in my game directory. Now, if you go to game object, you'll have this new menu called export to FBX. And let's go ahead. I'm going to turn off keep instances. Not a fan of that. I'm going to call this room 01 prefab export. Going to select this whole prefab. BX file looks good. I'm going to change the path. Scenes export. Okay, that looks like it. Select folder. That looks about right. Let's see what we get. Nothing to export. Okay, let's try this. Select everything. Let's try that again. All right, let's see what that looks like. Now, in my case, I'm going to work in Maya. The principles apply to any 3D package you're using. It's probably easier just to drag and drop it in. So let's, let's see if that works. So if I click on any single piece over here, I right click, go to UV sets, UV zero, UV one. Okay, it imported our UV set from Unity. Okay, that makes it a little bit more simple. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting all of the game objects and I'm not really working on the UV set zero because that's our regular textures and I want that to be exactly the same. I don't want to change the texture. All I want to do is adjust the UV set one. If I come here to UV set right here, you'll see all the different pieces. And okay, all of the pieces are set to the same UV. So with the whole UV set selected on all the objects, let's focus on unwrapping this. If you notice right now, they're all overlapping. What I'm gonna first do, I'm gonna hit it with a complete automatic wrap. Now, I also wanna UV unwrap this so that it's laid out without all this overlapping geometry. I'm grabbing all the UVs, I'm holding shift, right click, 
going to layout, layout UVs, whichever program you're using. The only setting that I really need you to pay close attention to is the pre-scaling or the scaling of the UVs. I want all the UVs to be in the same scale. I want them to have the same resolution across the whole room. Preserve 3D ratios, so that's what I want. And keep in mind, I am on UV set one. This is the light map UVs. So I am unwrapping them. And now I'm gonna create two copies just in case I end up using them. One copy is going to be the same prefab, but merged. Curious what this will look like. So combine, this will not be our prefab. I'm just gonna call it merged. Where's our pivot? Wrong spot, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna put it where the original was. Yep, the pivot matches. Just wanna make sure that there's no weird alignment issues. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and export these into Unity. Uh, just so that it's easy for me to follow. Maya exports. Come here and export these myself. I'm just gonna use my game exporter. Room. There's no skinning. These don't really matter, even if you have them on. I just I just have a habit of turning everything off that I don't need. Um, export to a single file. I don't need to embed anything. And these don't really matter. Even if you don't, just make sure you're not exporting everything. Right now, it's set to export everything. I just want to export my selection one at a time. Okay, let's go and export that. No input connections. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and go to this. And I'm going to call this merged. All right. So first, check and make sure that your light maps carry through. If I look at my merged mesh, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna select the this thing that has this mesh looking icon on it. Go to, right now it's set to shaded. Let's go to UV layout. UV zero looks like this, which is fine. And my UV one looks exactly how I want it. And then the nice thing is all of our materials are showing up as expected, so. This is nice. When I merged it, it's all coming in. And we still have our non-merged mesh, and it's just chaos in there. There's just so many things going on. But the final setup is pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead for both meshes. Let's connect their uh, material references, just so that all the materials, they're using the right materials, just so we can actually see our work. So cream. All right, so that goes for all the materials have been set for the non-merged model. I'm gonna press apply. Okay, those are all connected. Let's go ahead and open up the room of one scene. I'm going to remove this old one, or better yet, let me just hide it. I'm come to my merged model, I'm gonna drop it into the scene. I'm gonna turn off lighting just so I can see what it looks like. It should look identical. For my workflow, I created a shared light rig that I use in every scene for the lighting. So if you come here, let me double click on this just so you can see how it's set up. It's got two light blockers and a directional light. Where's the directional light? Okay, so we're there. So it'll be obvious what it's doing. I'm blocking light coming through this wall that doesn't have a wall and the roof. I just found putting the roof one created a nicer light. It's not necessary, but the main thing is I just want to block lighting to get the lighting from getting through this open area. So if I drag and drop this into my prefab, it should line up just nicely. And the main thing is, now I can just bring it out. The main thing is the directional light that we're going to use to bake everything. So this is a new mesh that I added. So I'm going to set it to static. Because we custom UV'd it, don't mess with the scale in the light map. It's fixed. Um, it's going to be one UV shell. There isn't really... So we come here, but you notice everything has the same amount of resolution. And that's what I want for consistency. So that's looking very promising. Do another bake. Something's going on here. Oh, let me see. Okay, so we got... Our merged room, I need to reactivate our light because that's where our directional light is. Otherwise, there's no light in the scene. Set to static. That's what was causing our issues. So just double check if you're getting all black when you edit an existing FBX file and you try to generate a light map and it's all black, make sure that for whatever reason, the static is not unchecked. I don't know why that happened, but it looks like on import, it got reset. And here's the key distinction here. Um, let me, oh, I do not like this. Let me look at this real quick. Hmm. 
So I want to maximize this space, but I also want it to be predictable. So in Unity, you can come in here and you can come in here in the scale factor. It doesn't matter what I set this to. It doesn't matter, 2000, whatever. It says object size light map has reached. Because this mesh is merged and I expect all of the UVs to be in the same shell, it doesn't matter what scale you set it to. Um, it's going to say um, max size has been reached. Now, what really dictates your scale of your final light map is right here. Max light map size. So I'm going to set it to 4K. I'm going to generate it. After this is done, you should notice that it should take the full space of our UV layout. Okay, that's a little too long. I'm going to cancel this. Maybe for a final render, we can do something a little fancier. But I'm going to set it to, let's do, what, what does 2K look like? Okay, I, I can do two minutes. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and with two minutes. All right, so that looks what we expect. Let's go to lighting. The main thing I want to focus on is this. All right, I don't know what this is. Let me, something's getting caught. Where is that? That looks correct. Oh, you know what this is? This is the light blockers. So let me come here. I just want to prove that there's only one map being generated. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn off the light blockers because you see that they are creating a texture map. And let's say we just want to keep our project clean. None of that. Let's remove that color data. This, this zero one looks like it's for the light blocker. And that's because the light blocker is set to static. Let's see if we can still bake lighting. Because if it's not set to static, and then it's dynamic. I'm just not sure if the light map bake takes into account dynamic objects, but we'll know if it doesn't look busted. So my main focus is on making sure that we only have one light map to deal with that goes on the full room. Yep, that worked. This is the lighting that I want. And now when we go in into our baked light maps tab, you'll notice that there's only one texture. Another thing we can do is the trick that I showed you in our previous video is how you get rid of some of this stuff is even though we recorded at 4K, we can down res it to get rid of some, to just blur out some of that noise. It looks nice. All right. I'm going to focus on creating our material for the light map. I'm going to create a new folder here. And in this folder, I'm going to keep all of my files that I'll be using for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and create a shader graph. We are in URP. We can choose whether it's lit or unlit later. So for now, I'm going to choose lit. Pressing shift and then the space bar allows us to zoom in. Hold space to search. You can control D to dupe. I'm going to create two parameters. Texture 2D. This will be my base map. And another one for my light map. I'm also going to create a float vector, and this will be called intensity. I'm just going to put in parentheses a light map just for clarity. So light map goes into here, the texture 2D parameter. Okay, so we know our base map is going to be using the UV0, and this is very important. Our light map is going to be using UV1, the second UV slot. And from here, let's create a blend node, switch it from overlay to multiply. Connect the base map to base map one, the light map to blend four, and then the intensity to opacity, and then connect it into the base map. And for my case, I know that I'm not going to be using any lights in my scene. In your game or project, this you might want some lights on top of this. So in that case, if you have lighting in your scene or you want to use lighting, keep it lit. But because I know I'm not going to have any um, light, I'm going to select my fragment, go to graph settings, and on my material, I'm going to change it from lit to unlit. And this is just for me um, because in my tutorial, we're just only going to be using bake lighting, but you can mix and match. All right, so that's set up. I'm going to close this out. Oh, actually, one more thing. For my intensity, I want to change the mode from default to slider. And then the default value, I want it to be one, just so that um, it's on. One, uh, and the number being one means that we see the full light map. So I'm gonna set it to one, minimum zero, one, and it's a slider, that looks good. I'm gonna save it by clicking this save button right here. All right, let's see what we get. Here's our shader that we just finished creating. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go to create material. 
And let's see, I'm going to call this room light map. Instead of shader, I'm just going to call it matte for material. All right, so we have our material. Now I want to find the light map that I want to use, which if you recall, if you go to the light tab, we can trace it back. In the baked light maps, this um, light map, I click on it. Now, this is the original light map. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to click on it, Control D to duplicate, and I'm going to change the texture type from light map to just default. I'm going to turn my generate mid map off. Sometimes I find that this helps with hide some seams. Press apply. I'm going to rename this to room 01 light map texture. And then I am going to move this into whichever folder I was working in. I think it's this one. Okay, so we have our light map. So here's my new material I just created and just a base map and light map. So I'm gonna connect my light map. And if we look to our actual merged mesh, there's eight different materials. So I'm just going to create eight different materials using the same light map material I created. So the first one is wall green. So I'm gonna call this um, a one wall green. Okay, that looks good. I'm just gonna duplicate it and just go down the list. Cream, probably gonna fast forward this part, but the idea is that I'm just selecting the mesh and looking at this and just going wall green cream and just going down the list to create one for each material that I need. So now I'm going to find the texture that's connected to each of these materials. So for example, if I click on wall green, it'll take me to the wall green material, but that's not enough. I need to select the texture this thing is holding. So if I select the material wall green, I see this base map it's connected to. So I'm gonna click this, now select it. This is what I need to connect back into the material I created for the wall green. And I need to do this for everything that I created. Wall green right here, select, control paste. And just to show you what that looks like, if I drag and drop it, select the merged mesh, and I wanna drag it right into this slot. There you go. I need to increase the resolution. I'm getting some seams here. Wall green, light map, where is it? Right here, 4K, that should be gone, okay. And the neat thing is, if you look at here, this is all unlit, and these, this intensity right here, if I slide it down, zero is the original texture with no light map. And the nice thing is if I slide this up, I get the light map, and then you can kind of adjust this to your liking. For now, I'm just gonna crank it up to here. And then now I need to go through and do this for every single material. So cream is a color. My shader doesn't support just pure color, so I'm going to add that in. I'm going to call it tint and set the default value to white. So this new tint that I've created, I want to tint only the base map color. So we're going to go, it's going to create a multiply. I'm going to just connect it here, and then I'm going to reconnect it to the blend. Our tent has a default value of white. We got our base map, it gets a tent value, and then it blends back in and multiplies on the light map. And then we connect that to our base map, press save. So now when I come here and choose a value, I'll get something. So now let's go ahead and go back to our cream material. And this one is just diffuse only, or a color picked without any texture. I'm going to go back to my material, find the cream, texture's empty, all right, and that is going to go into the cream slot, and that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and adjust the slider. Yep, looks great. Let's move on to the next. And that is our baked lighting on materials. Thanks for watching.